Welcome back. Today we're looking at the PS8A from Sanwa. Solar charging multimeter. Let's take a look. The 4,000 count multimeter is also pocketable, AKA it is really tiny. Gotta love it. A little pocket rocket is a auto ranging 4,000 count powered by the sun. Yes, it is solar operated. You don't need batteries. And hey, you're not gonna have to change batteries. That is definitely a nice thing. What do you get in the package? Well, you get one of those nice translucent packages from Sanwa. Shows you exactly what you're getting, as well as you get your Sanwa calibration certificate, letting you know that this meter has been calibrated at the factory and has passed the Sanwa quality assurance testing. As well, you get a fold out manual. Um, very well done again, nice, clear, concise text. Yes, the PS8A does have those permanently attached leads. Uh, they are tied to the multimeter, basically. You're not going to be able to remove those unless you want to get down and dirty. But you know what? As always, Sanwa test leads are second to none high quality leads. So I really don't think that's a problem. Meter itself, as I said, is a pocket style meter. Very tiny. Even says Sanwa pocket on it. Just doesn't say rocket, but it's still a pocket. Rocket clamshell style opening and bada boom bada bing go to bang there you are greeted with that gorgeous looking solar cell which will be powering this little multimeter looking at the rotary selector switch starting at the off position dc volts maximum 500 volts ac volts maximum 500 volts continuity resistance up to 40 mega ohm diode as always, that Sanwa engineering comes into play. You can only close the clamshell case one way, and that's in the off position. As you can see, we're still in the diode function, and yes, it will not close because of this protrusion right here. So simply turning it to the off position puts it in a nice recess and allows that clamshell case to close. Not a bad looking display. Now there is no tilt stand on this meter. So by default, yeah, it's sitting flat on your surface. Um, but if you can get to the appropriate angle, you can see uh, it's, it's not a bad looking LCD display at all. Here we're looking at the estimated time of recharge and uh, how long or usability you're gonna have from that charge. Now, this is where I think things get a little gray uh, the light power, for instance, that they're claiming here, 5,000 lux at a window on a cloudy day, seems a little bit high. Um, so does that uh, fluorescent lamp, the 10,000 lux, and we're talking basically inside. Now, normally, uh, lux-wise, you're going to get about 1,000 lux or less uh, inside your home. Under the studio lights, I'm getting about 1,060 lux thereabouts. Um, here we're looking at around a 10,000 lux rating according to the Sanwa guide, which just seems really high. Do take these um, usable hours and reach, recharge time with a grain of salt. Uh, chances are they are definitely on the high side. As always, the fit finish Qualitaten is very, very good. Typical Sanwa quality. Um, this thing is a little tank, really. Um, I don't foresee any problem if this thing drops. Uh, really, it should withstand most bumps and knocks without any issue. If we look at those test leads, as I mentioned, they are permanently attached to that housing. Uh, here is the reel which holds the leads themselves. And yeah, look at that. Gold plated as are all Sanwa test leads. No cat rating on the test leads themselves. The length of that wire is about 30 centimeters or so, just over a foot in length. Uh, definitely long enough for uh, any small job that you might need it for. No cat rating on the multimeter at all. Definitely want to leave this on low voltage. Uh, yeah. Give you an indication of the size of the PS8A. Uh, you can see, yeah, definitely small. These are all small pocket style meters from Sanwa. And it basically fits right in. In fact, in terms of the overall width, it's definitely probably the smallest of the lot. On the top here, we have that RD700, which I reviewed not too long ago. And you can tell as a full-size multimeter, yeah, it's just literally dwarfs any of these things. So a tiny, tiny pocket style multimeter. And once again, with the meter closed up, you can still see just how small 
this little solar meter really is. It's tiny. Starting off in DC accuracy mode, sitting at 2.49 volts, 2.5 is what we wanted to see. Want to see 5.0, 4.98 off by a couple of counts. 7.50 is what we need, 7.47 coming up. And finally, 10 volts coming in as 9.96. So yeah, not as accurate as, as I was hoping. Definitely nothing bad, as still within spec. In resistance mode next, 100 ohm is what we want to see. And oh yeah, oh so close. Definitely works for me. Let's check out that resistance ranging speed sitting at 9 mega ohm right now. Bring it down to 8. 6 mega ohm. Yeah, it's a little laggy. 3 mega ohm. 1 mega ohm. Definitely accurate, but once again, a little on the slow side. AC accuracy, not a problem. 121.9 volts, looking good. LED mode is next. Boy, we've had some surprises in this testing genre, haven't we? Starting off with the green LED. And nothing. Over to the yellow. Mm, nothing again. Oh, geez. Over to the red LED. No can do. Over to the blue. Nothing. Finally, the white. Oh, yeah. No, no. We are... We are 0 for 5 once again in LED mode. Ah, darn. Standard diode is not a problem. Thank goodness for that. In diode, you can see the PSA Day is putting out a paltry 1.3 volts. Just not enough to illuminate those LEDs. Ah. Finally, we're in continuity mode. Oh, yeah. Come on, Sanwa leads. Gold tip. Don't let us down. 3, 2, 1. Yeah, no worries here. Latched. Not that bad in terms of the overall volume. And it's quick. Yeah, good stuff. A very respectable 75.2 decibels. Maximum output volume in continuity thus far not so bad yeah that led was disappointing but you know what it is a solar battery powered um, multimeter so mm, i guess just not enough juice coming out of there you know what let's take a look on the inside and see what's up already down and dirty time yeah here we are looking at the inside of that multimeter look at that no shielding wow that is bare bones um, I will say, though, that is a really good, high-quality plastic. It's polypropylene, I believe, resin, rosin, and, yeah, just nice, nice, heavy-duty. So, yes, I do stand corrected. There is a battery in here, a rechargeable battery. Um, it is an, a uh, lithium manganese dioxide rechargeable. Wow, three volts being pushed out, as you can see, and it uh, looks like this one is actually made in Japan. So there is a battery. Now, you're not going to have to replace it. Um, it is basically in there for the long term. As well, we have two brass threaded inserts for the bottom. Uh, that is what uh, retains the outer housing of the PCB to the case. Very, very nice. I see one PTC at the top just sneaking out. Um, yeah, don't forget this does not do current, not even milliamps. So... In terms of the input protection, it's not going to be very robust, that's for sure. Hey, let's go in on the other side. Wow, that, my friends, is Sanwa quality right there. Look at those rotary selector pads. Gorgeous 24 karat. Well, I call it 24 karat. Let's just call it gold. It is beautiful. It is shiny. And it is definitely high quality. Love it. Here we have the two test leads, positive and negative, soldered very nicely to that PCB. Ah, gorgeous. We have that one little PTC as well over here. And that is about it in terms of the overall uh, input protection. Obviously, this is on the voltage side of things. Uh, look at that rotary selector track itself. Oh, that is so, so nice. Oh, yeah. Nice, 
thick pads. Um, once again, gold plated, absolutely gorgeous. Main IC is the FS9711, that is from Fortune. It doubles as the LCD display, uh, AC to DC converter, uh, everything. An awesome little microprocessor. Over here we have that soft touch button and underneath it is the button pad on the PCB itself. A lot of integrated components here. Uh, nice discreet circuitry. All in all, a really clean looking PCB. Uh, definitely, you can tell we got some sound quality going on. I mean, look at that nice solder glob here for the battery terminal. You know, that is done beautifully. And over where the test leads wind around the outer housing, you can see we have these nice little pillars built in. And that's going to help with that strain relief. Finally, at the top, we have the uh, pads for the LCD display. And if we flip it over here, there is that LCD itself. And there is the zebra strip right at the bottom. Finally, we have our piezo. And all in all, yeah, in a nutshell, that is our internals for the PS88. Nice and clean, nice thick PCB. You know, I can't say this enough when you see a thick PCB like that. I mean, look at that gorgeous, you know. Uh, definitely well made. Okay, gonna put things back together and come back with, you got it, my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the PSA8A from Sanwa. Hey, this is an okay little pocket meter. You know, let's face it, I think the caveat for this one is the fact that it is powered by the sun or, or your fluorescent light or, you know, you know what I mean, saying. You don't really need to stick batteries in every other month. Hey, that's a good thing. Downside is you are losing a lot of functionality. Um, you know, it doesn't do current, not even milliamps. And let's face it, uh, it does do standard diode testing, but it can't light up an LED. Ugh. And yes, it doesn't do capacitance as well. So once again, it is a very basic streamlined meter. Now that being said, if you just wanna throw something in your glove compartment, take it on the road. You know what? This is a little travel warrior. This thing is built like a tank and it will definitely stand the test of time. The Sanwa PS8A gets a solid three out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Hey, that puts an end to Sanwa week. Wow, this has been a load of fun. I've really, really enjoyed bringing this to you. And you know what? I just touched the tip of the iceberg. There were so many more instruments from Sanwa I did not get a chance to review yet. Yes, don't worry. I'm going to review them all. There's the clamp meters. We've got those insulation testers. I know lots of folks wanted to see these insulation testers. Hey, hang in there, guys. They're coming. Just not part of the Sanwa Week reviews, that's all. But I will be reviewing each and every one of them. Hey, you know what? This has been a lot of fun. Don't forget, September 15th, live, we're going to do that Sanwa Multimeter giveaway. I'm giving away two multimeters. Me and my lovely wife. Yes, she's going to be putting her hands into that bowl and picking out two lucky winners. Hope it's you. Hey, thanks for watching. To the next one, keep on testing.